Hand sanitizer has become a scarce commodity in a post-coronavirus world. It is sold out in stores across the country and around the world, pushing people to churn to extreme measures. One man sold a single bottle of Purell on eBay for $138. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, a 7-Eleven owner allegedly began making her own, diluting industrial cleaning chemicals and water and then packing it into official-looking bottles to sell in her store. Authorities only found out when the concoction began burning the skin of the people who used it. But what you might be surprised to learn is that standard, old-school, run-of-the-mill soap is actually one of the most effective weapons we have against COVID-19. How is it possible that something people have literally been using for thousands of years could be so helpful in dealing with a 21st century pandemic? Well, it really boils down to the molecular makeup of soap. Soap molecules sort of have two halves. One half loves water, the other loves lipids, which are fats, like oil and grease. The scientific name for molecules like these is amphiphilic, meaning it's both hydrophilic, water-loving, and lipophilic, fat-loving. That's why soap is so great for doing dishes. You take a plate full of oils and bacon grease from the remnants of a tasty breakfast, put soap on it, and scrub it a bit. That soap is bonding to the greasy fat stuck on your plate, but it's also bonding to water. So once you knock it loose with some scrubbing, that fat washes right off during the rinse and you get a clean plate. This same concept is at work when you wash your hands. COVID-19 looks like this, as does every other member of the coronavirus or common cold family. It's basically a spiky microscopic ball that holds a bunch of the virus's genetic material inside. The outer layer of that ball is made of lipids, which, as we already know, are fats. The coronavirus gets its name from those spikes, which some scientists believed resembled the corona of the sun. The spikes are proteins. The way COVID-19 infects you is its proteins bond with special receptor proteins on the outside of your cells that act as gatekeepers. It's kind of like the virus is a clever old-timey burglar who has forged a key for the door to your cells. Once the proteins bond, the virus's fatty membrane fuses with your cell's stronger, slightly different fatty membrane and moves inside the cell. Then, it dumps its own genetic material into the cell, hijacking the cell's resources and creating a bunch of new copies of the virus. Soap can stop this process before it ever starts. Remember how soap loves fat and water? Well, when you wash your hands, soap will start trying to bond with the fatty lipid membrane of the virus, but it also wants to bond with water. The resulting push and pull can actually break the virus's membrane apart. The bonds that are holding those fatty membranes are not very strong. So then the hydrophobic side of the soap goes after that fatty membrane of the virus. It pulls it literally like shredding it apart in that dramatic way. The only catch is you have to keep washing long enough for the push and pull to weaken the bonds between the lipids holding the virus's membrane together. This is why you hear experts recommending that you wash for at least 20 seconds, touching every part of your hand and creating friction. During that 20 seconds, it's the actual time for that bond to break. So then think of it like two hands holding together. It's the chemical action, which is really not visible to the eye, that's taking place until the lock is complete and it separates. And that separation, if you were to watch it through the microscope, you realize it takes that lag time for that complete detachment to occur. The thing is though, that even if you don't fully break the bonds holding the virus together, soap has the added benefit of also just grabbing onto the virus. Then when you rinse your hands off, even if you don't vanquish the virus, you can wash it down the drain with the rest of the foamy soap suds. The fatty membrane of the virus is literally getting sucked away from your skin and being deposited in that foamy or the soapy layer. So then by the time you rinse with water, it literally just goes away. Hand sanitizer works differently. The alcohol in the sanitizer can break down the membrane too, but hand sanitizer dries up really quickly. So you traditionally have much less time for it to work on that membrane than you have with soap, which easily lathers for 20 seconds or longer. Hand sanitizer also doesn't carry the virus with it down the drain. It just sits on your hand. So you're not getting the extra benefit of rinsing away virus particles. For this reason, many experts consider soap more effective in combating the virus. And our widespread belief that hand sanitizer is just as good or better worries some of them. It is likely that hand sanitizers may actually unintentionally foster 
the spread of this virus through asymptomatic means. Imagine if you throw in these limiting factors such as not applying the hand sanitizers in sufficient quantity, not rubbing your hands long enough, or maybe drying your hands before it actually works, and maybe not using sanitizers with up to 60% of alcoholic content. Now what you're doing is you're still carrying it. Hand sanitizer is also still a major tool in our coronavirus toolkit. You don't always have the ability to wash your hands. Like, for example, if you are stepping off a subway car where you just held a pole. Hand sanitizer can be an effective first pass in a situation like that. To get the most out of that first pass, though, it's a good idea to make sure you are using enough to cover your whole hand and keep rubbing for 20 seconds just like you would when washing your hands. But even after using hand sanitizer, it's always a good idea to follow up with a thorough hand wash when you get the chance. So the major takeaway here is that if you can't find hand sanitizer, don't sweat it too much. Just focus on washing your hands well with soap and pick up hand sanitizer next time it's in stock. And of course, first and foremost, make sure you follow the latest guidelines from the CDC on hand sanitizer, hand washing, and prevention of COVID-19. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, help us out by liking, subscribing, and dropping us a comment. And to stay updated on Cheddar's latest, hit the bell next to that subscribe button too.